Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining the webinar today. My name is William, and I'm an application engineer for Go Engineer. Today, we're going to be talking about 3D scanning and archaeology. So what is 3D scanning? It's the process of capturing 3D surface data from an object. Our scanners use structured light or lasers to capture the geometry of a part. This includes color and texture. The Go Engineer partner in the 3D scanning industry is Creaform. So we sell and support products from this company. We partnered with them back in 2015 and it's been a great relationship ever since. We've been able to help out a lot of our customers with this really amazing technology. Through Creaform, we have three different product lines and I'm gonna describe them in detail in the upcoming slides. So why Creaform scanners? Go Engineer decided to partner with Creaform because we feel they have the best 3D scanning technology on the market. We noticed that traditional 3D scanners, or some people know them as tripod or arm scanners, have a lot of limitations. For example, a lot of them require a tripod or need to be bolted down to a table. Some of them are large heavy assemblies. They're stationary, which means they have a fixed position. And usually they have a longer setup and calibration time. Creaform 3D scanners are handheld, so there's no tripod or arm attached to it. They're very lightweight, which makes them easy to use for long periods of time. They're portable, our smaller units fit in a case no bigger than a standard suitcase, which I carry on flights all the time, and they're non-contact, which means the scanner itself does not have to touch the part. So how is 3D scanning used in archaeology? There are four main categories where this technology can be successfully implemented. This includes 3D archives, virtual museums, restoration and repair, and preservation. So let's go into detail on each of these. The first category is 3D archives. Universities and museums can create digital libraries of their fossils. Students or researchers can view, rotate, and zoom into a 3D artifact right from their computer. For example, the two images that you see here were taken from AfricanFossils.org and Sketchfab.com. And both of these websites have digital libraries where students can view and study hundreds of 3D scanned artifacts. This type of database can also improve organization. Instead of having to open 10 different images, a student can view an entire artifact with just one file. Digital libraries provide access to anybody that wants to learn about archaeology. In fact, researchers can collaborate at the global level, especially if they want to compare artifacts from different regions of the world. The next category is virtual museums. So this is a pretty cool application because it can expand your audience to anybody that has access to the web. The image that you see here was taken from the website for the Smithsonian Museum of Natural History in Washington, DC. And they pretty much have their entire museum on their website. It's actually pretty cool because you can take a virtual tour of the entire museum. And you can actually click on an artifact and it'll give you a description just like a tour guide would and you can add notes, and it even provides links to further reading on that artifact if you want more information. And the best part is this can all be done from the convenience of your computer. Now, there was a lot of different 3D scanning technologies that were used to create this. However, it serves as an example of what's possible with 3D scanning. The next two categories involve a complementary technology called 3D printing. Now, I'm going to be doing a separate webinar on 3D printing and archaeology, However, I wanted to introduce it since it's heavily involved with the next two categories. 3D printers can create physical 3D models from scan or CAD data. They can even print color or texture, which makes them great for archaeology. The next category is restoration and repair. A lot of times when these priceless artifacts are being handled, transported, or even cleaned, they may be accidentally broken. For this type of situation, 3D scanning and 3D printing present a very effective solution. The broken pieces can be very carefully put back together using glue or other methods. The part can then be 3D scanned. It's okay if there's holes or cracks, that can all be cleaned up in the scanning software. Once we have a nice clean file, we can send it to the 3D printer and you can print out the replacement parts. For example, the image shown here is of a bronze statue that had broken hands the museum was able to use 3D scanning and 3D printing to create replacements. Another interesting application would be missing components. Let's say you have an artifact that's missing a right arm, for example. If the left arm is still intact, you can actually 3D scan it, and using the software, you can mirror it to get the right side. Once you have that, you can 3D print it to make your artifact complete. 
If you need your replacement parts to be made out of a specific material, you can actually make a mold for it. All you have to do is get that scan data and bring it into a CAD software like SOLIDWORKS and you can create a mold for it. And the best part is you can actually 3D print that mold. Also, if you need to create custom stands or joints for your artifacts, 3D scanning can also help. For example, this is really popular with skeletons. You can actually 3D scan mating surfaces and design custom stands or joints to help restore these artifacts to their original position. The next category is preservation. 3D scanning and 3D printing together can help preserve so many of our priceless artifacts. For example, duplicating fragile artifacts can help preserve the originals. This can eliminate the need to always have to move or transport the part which could potentially damage it. These 3D printed duplicates can provide a very cool hands-on learning experience. Students can grab, touch, and feel these parts which may not have been possible with the originals. Another popular application is scale models. For example, large artifacts can sometimes be difficult to examine. For situations like this, you can scan the artifact and 3D print it at a much lower scale. These scale models are usually passed around classrooms and is a lot better than looking at pictures in a textbook. Transporting fragile artifacts can be very risky. However, you can 3D scan those artifacts and design custom packaging for it as shown in the image below. This can help preserve your artifacts and ensure a safe delivery. The 3D scan process for archaeology involves two main steps, capturing the scan data and processing the scan data. In order to capture the scan data effectively, you need to pick the right scanner. Do you need a structured light scanner? Do you need a laser scanner? What type of accuracy are you looking for? These are all questions that will help you pick the right scanner. Also, it's important to note your scanning environment. Are you going to be scanning outside? Are you going to be scanning inside? Depending on the scanner, the environment may affect the quality of the scan. Once you have the right scanner, you actually have to prepare the part. This may involve placing target stickers on or around the part. If it's very reflective, you may have to spray some light powder on it. And if it needs to be positioned a certain way, you may have to fixture the part. And finally, you can scan the part and save the raw data. The next step is to process the scan data. This involves merging scans together if you have multiple scans, fixing holes in the data if you have an incomplete scan, removing imperfections by using some of the smoothing tools in the software, and finally, obtaining a nice clean STL file. Now, let's go into detail on the 3D scanners that we offer at GoEngineer. The first scanner in the Creoform lineup is the Go Scan. It's a structured light scanner, so it projects a light that looks similar to QR code. This structured light shifts along the surface of a part. This is what gives you an accurate surface. These scanners are also able to pick up colors and texture, which is why this scanner is so popular in archaeology. The Go Scan is known as a professional grade 3D scanner because it can produce accurate, high quality scans. For the resolution, we can go up to 4,007 inch for the Go Scan 20 or 20,007 inch for the Go Scan 50. For the accuracy, both of these are a little over 3,500 of an inch, plus or minus. The recommended part size for the Go Scan 20 is 2 to 20 inches or 1 to 10 feet for the Go Scan 50. The next scanner in the lineup is the Handy Scan. This is a red laser scanner and it was designed for very high accuracy and faster data collection. Since the main focus of this scanner is high detail, it does not have a color or texture option. The Handy Scan is known as a metrology grade scanner because it's successfully being used for inspections in the manufacturing industry. For the resolution, we can go up to 4,007 inch for the Handy Scan 300 or 2,007 inch for the Handy Scan 700. The volumetric accuracy for both of these scanners is 7 ten thousandths of an inch per running foot. The Handy Scan has an infinite part size range. However, the best results are achieved for parts under 12 feet. The last scanner in the Creoform lineup is the MetraScan. It's also a red laser scanner, but it has better volumetric accuracy than the other two product lines. One of the best features about this scanner is its ability to pick up reflective geometry. Unlike other scanners that require powder in order to pick up reflective geometry, the MetraScan can do it without targets or powder. I've personally scanned a polished chrome wheel with the MetraScan without any issues. This scanner is also considered metrology grade. However, it was designed for larger parts. For the resolution, we can go up to 2007 inch. 
Rather than stacking up accuracy per running foot like the Handy Scan, the MetroScan deals with a full volume accuracy rating. This is because the scanner can be purchased with 320 cubic feet of scanning volume or 586 cubic feet of scanning volume. Regardless, as long as you're scanning a part that's within that volume, your accuracy will be plus or minus two and a half thousandths of an inch, guaranteed. So earlier we talked about processing scan data and how important it is. Whether you're trying to send your scan data to a 3D printer or to a 3D CAD software, it is absolutely necessary to prep the data before you do that. GoEngineer offers a variety of software tools in order to achieve this. If you'd like more information, please visit our YouTube channel where we have videos on scan data processing software. Okay, so here's a real world example of 3D scanning in archaeology. This was for the Natural History Museum in London. The objective here was to 3D scan the skull of this blue whale named Hope before the museum puts it on display in the exhibit hall. They wanted a 3D scan of the skull just in case something ever happens to it. That way they can still study or examine it long after it's gone. They used the combination of 3D scanning with the MetroScan and photogrammetry to obtain a very accurate scan. Here's a 3D rendering of the skull after the data was processed. As you can see, the detail is amazing. This is from the University of Wyoming. They purchased two ghost scans from us and I was there to train their digital collections group. This was kind of a difficult part to scan because of all the detail in the glyphs. I couldn't put any targets on the part because it could block some of the features. However, as you can see here, the ghost scan picked up all that great detail and the color as well. Here's another artifact that we scanned that day. Thought it looked pretty cool. And we even scanned an arrowhead. And as you can see there, we used a little bit of silly putty to fixture the part so we can scan it properly. And that's it for today. Thank you for joining the webinar. Thank you.